to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. John chapter 10, verse number 27. You know, there are some people's voices that are so unique, that sound so different or intriguing, that the moment you hear that, you know exactly who that is, and you listen carefully to what they've got to say. Friend, that's the way it ought to be for the child of God concerning the voice of Jesus. And so we welcome you today to our lesson on hearing the voice of Jesus. What is it that the Christian needs to listen to about the voice of Jesus and what subject specifically? This is what we're going to discuss in today's lesson, and so we hope you've got your Bible handy. If you don't have your Bible ready, take a minute, locate it, as we're going to look to the Word of God on this wonderful subject about the voice of Jesus. We're so glad that you've joined us for our study today. As always, we want you to know that today's lesson is being brought to you by individual Christians and congregations of the Church of Christ. The Lord's Church in your local area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. Whether that be on Sunday for worship or Wednesday for Bible study, you would be an honored guest at any of their assemblies. You'll find people there who love God, who love others, and who are deeply concerned about the souls of men and women. Friend, if you've got a Bible question, maybe you're wondering about salvation or the church or, or any number of religious uh, matters, you'll find people in the Lord's church in your local area who'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God with you in kindness and love and look at the truth of God's Word. Also, here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your desire to know God better. We encourage you to check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can access all our lessons. They're available to you free of charge. In fact, if you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our lessons, just go to our website, fill out a media request form. We'd be happy to make that available to you as a digital download or other formats if you need that as well. And friend, we want to encourage you also to check us out on Facebook, like our Facebook page, follow us on that. Great way to keep up with things that we're doing. And then, of course, in our fast-paced world today, where everybody's got a smartphone, we want to encourage you to check out the Gospel of Christ app that's available in the respective play stores. You can get it there, and it's a great way to keep up with our new lessons, what we're doing, and just so that you can know how we're trying to spread the Gospel and reach people with the news of Jesus Christ. And as always... We want to thank you today for joining us for our study. Hope you've got your Bible ready. Let's look to the Word of God together. If God's sheep hear His voice and they follow Him, John 10 verse 27, what is it that we need to listen to the voice of Jesus about? What do I need to hear the voice of Jesus concerning. Well, today we're going to, going to consider several different areas that we want to listen to the voice of Jesus on these subjects. First, we want to hear the voice of Jesus about God the Father. What did Jesus say about His Father, about our Father God, that we need to listen very carefully to? Number one, Jesus taught us that we need to hear his voice about God concerning loving Almighty God. Do you remember Mark chapter 12, verse number 30 following? A lawyer came to Jesus, and a lawyer then would have been a scribe of the law, a student of the Old Testament who spent many hours studying it and writing it. And he came to Jesus with a great question. What's the greatest commandment? And Jesus responded by saying, The first and greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, 
with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment. And of course, the second, like unto it, is to love your neighbor as yourself. And of course, that lawyer thought Jesus answered well. And the reference was to Deuteronomy 6, verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, and you shall love the Lord your God. He thought Jesus was referencing that as well. But friend, when it comes to hearing the voice of Jesus, I need to listen carefully to what the Lord says about loving God with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind, and all my strength. What are we talking about there? What's the Lord trying to get at? Giving everything of me, everything that I am and everything I have to love God, loving him completely in every way. You see, Paul would say in Luke chapter in Galatians 2 verse 20, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live. Christ lives in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul had put it all to death. And he was now living 100% every day to serve God. And thus, we need to take up our cross daily and live faithful to God and love him in every way possible. What else did Jesus say? about God that we need to listen to? Jesus taught us very clearly that if we want to live, really live, it'll be by every word out of God's mouth. Matthew chapter 4, Jesus is being tempted by Satan. And Satan knows that Jesus has been in the wilderness 40 days without food, that he's hungry. And so his first temptation is, if you're the son of God, Command these stones to become bread. Make yourself something to eat out of these stones if you're truly God's son. How did Jesus respond to that? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Our food, our spiritual food, does not consist of the day-to-day -day bread and things like unto that. that. That's not where our real sustenance is. If we're going to live, it'll be by the word of God. Jeremiah was told to take the little book and eat it. John was told, take the little book and eat it. Jeremiah, he ate God's word and there were the joy and rejoicing of his heart. Jeremiah 15, verse 16, God's word is what we consume spiritually. It's what causes us to grow and develop as a Christian. And so when I hear the voice of Jesus about God, I remember if I'm really going to live, live life to the fullest, I've got to live by every word from the mouth of God. We're hanging on every word from God's mouth. Thirdly, the voice of Jesus teaches us about God that we need to be busy doing the Father's will. Luke 6, 46, Jesus said, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? And then Jesus said in Matthew 7, verse 21, it's not, it's not everybody who can just mouth those words, Lord, Lord, that's going to go to heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Friend, if I'm going to do God's will, I want to be faithful to the Lord, if I'm going to live like God wants me to live, then I've got to do what the Lord says. It's not enough just uh, to give lip service to the Lord. Not enough just to say, I'm a Christian. I need to live like it. Be faithful to the Lord until death. Revelation chapter 2, verse number 10. There are a lot of people who pay lip service, but when it comes right down to it, are we really living like God wants us to live every day? You know, when it comes to hearing the voice of Jesus, we need to listen to what Jesus says and have faith in God's ability to care for us. Jesus will tell us not to worry. And he'll remind us that is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. And then he'll say something like, consider the lilies of the air, they don't, or the birds of the air, and the lilies of the field. They don't toil, they don't gather into barns, and yet they're more glorious than Solomon. If God so takes care of the birds of the air, and the lilies of the field, which today are and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not care for you, O oh, you of little faith? I need to have the, when I listen to the voice of Jesus, I need to have the faith that God's going to care for me. 
that he knows what I need before I even ask it, that he knows infinite things about me, the number of hairs on my head, that, that, that he knows every difficulty and challenge that we face, and that God is more than able to help us. We can come boldly through the throne of grace that we might find grace and mercy to help in our time of need. And so I need to have faith that God will care. My God shall supply all your needs in Christ Jesus, Paul would say in Philippians chapter 4. Not, not every want necessarily, but every need. God's going to take care of that. You see, every good and every perfect gift comes down from above, from the Father of lights, with whom there is no shadow or variation of turning. And so let's listen to the voice of Jesus as it relates to God. Secondly, let's hear the voice of Jesus as it relates to other people. What does Jesus teach me about my relationship with others around me? We see, my friend, Jesus teaches us to love one another, right? Uh, open your Bible to John chapter 13. Jesus gives his disciples a commandment here in John chapter 13, and we desperately, in today's day and age, we desperately need to hear the voice of Jesus about loving other people. John 13. Look at what the Bible says in verses 34 and 35. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know you are my disciples if you have love for one another. What is the evidence of Christianity? How can you know someone is a child of God and they're trying to live right? Well, there may be many ways to do that, but one is... By this, all will know you're my disciples if you love each other. If we don't even love each other, how can we claim to love God? If we can't even get along here, how do we think we're going to get along on the other side? Hearing the voice of Jesus means we love one another. You remember that second commandment we referenced earlier? First commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. The second likened to it is love your neighbor as yourself. Friend, we're talking about what we refer to as the golden rule. Matthew 7, verse 12. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Do you want people to be kind to you? Do you want people to treat you with respect? Do you want people to be kind and helpful and good and tender-hearted and compassionate and, and do what they can to, to help in, in every way? Well, friend, all of us want that. That's what we hope to receive. If that's what you hope to receive, you got to give it also. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Jesus also teaches me as it relates to hearing the voice of Jesus about others. He reminds us that even when it's hard, we have to love other people. We've got to love our enemies. Listen to Matthew chapter 5, and I want you to hear the voice of Jesus about loving your enemies. Jesus said, but I say to you, Love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. Pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. You know, loving people who are lovable, loving people that are family, loving your friends, all that's good and well and that's easy. But what about the person who spits in your face? What about the person who hates you? What about, what about the person who's your enemy? I've got to learn, if I'm going to hear the voice of Jesus, to love those who are not lovable. And God did that, did he not? While we were still without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man one die, yet perhaps for a good man, someone might dare to die. Listen to this, though. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. How do I learn to love the unlovable? By looking at God's love. God loved us when we, were un, when we were sinners, when we were lost, when we were, had turned our back on God. God extended his love to us that way. And so the greatest way to show our love to people who are not Christians, who may be opposed to Christianity, is not to be mean or unkind or spiteful, but to do our best to love them. What else did Jesus teach us about other people, about loving other people? Well, Jesus teaches us that we need to give. Be a giver, 
rather than someone who's always got their hand out wanting to receive. Jesus teaches us. When I hear the voice of Jesus, he teaches us that it is better to be a giver than one who gets. Look in your Bible in Acts chapter 20, and I want you to hear these words of Jesus mentioned by the Apostle Paul to the elders in Ephesus. Listen to verse number 35. Paul says, I've shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Why is it more blessed to give than to receive? Because it's harder sometimes to give. It requires more. It requires effort. It requires sacrifice. It requires giving of yourself sometimes. But friend, there's so much more in giving than you'll ever get in receiving. You see, Jesus said in Luke 6, 38, give and it'll be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Well, men put back into your bosom. There's a blessing in giving that comes, number one, from the fact that we are giving of ourselves to something greater, to the cause of God. But friend, don't you always, don't, don't you usually feel better? Rather than getting a gift, when you can actually do something to help others, when you can give of yourself, when you can make an impact in somebody else's life, that makes you feel a lot better than it is to get, get gifts all the time. Jesus also teaches us that we don't, as Christians, we don't return good for evil. Listen to Matthew chapter 5. Just because somebody does wrong to us, we are not in the get even type of mindset. In fact, the Bible teaches us not to return good for evil. Look in Matthew chapter 5 and listen to what the Bible says in verse 39. You've heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you not to resist an evil person. Whoever slaps you on the right cheek, turn the other to him also. If anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. Whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks from you and him who wants to borrow from you do not turn away. And so if somebody does evil to me, uh, somebody treats you bad, somebody calls you an ugly name, somebody does something to you that's wrong, is that your license to get back at them, to get even, to reap that vengeance on them? We don't return evil for evil. We return good for evil. Turn the other cheek. Uh, go the extra mile. Give to somebody who is wanting to do that. Help in every way is the idea. And so when I hear the voice of Jesus about others, it reminds me I need to be a loving person. It reminds me I need to be a giver. It reminds me that I'm not out looking to make every right wrong. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. I don't have to be uh, worried about all the vengeance that needs to be meted out. I've just got to love people and do the best I can in this life. Thirdly, I want to hear the voice of Jesus about himself. What does the Lord say I need to listen to and do concerning him? Well, naturally, the Bible teaches that we need to believe in him as the Son of God. Listen to John chapter 14, verse number one. I want you to notice what Jesus says about believing in him in the 14th chapter of the Gospel of John, verse number one. Jesus says these words to us. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Friend, I need to, I need to believe that he's the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6. I need to believe that he is the Son of God, that he's the Savior of the world, that without him, there's no hope. And life would be as miserable as you could ever imagine. And so believe he's the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus also teaches that we need to believe that we've got to come unto him to be what God wants us to be. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. My yoke is easy, my burden is light, you'll find rest for your souls. Jesus doesn't force. Here's the picture in the Bible. He stands at the door and knocks. We've got to open the door. We've got to let him in. You've got to come to Jesus. He's not going to kick the door in. You've got to have a heart that's ready to receive him. You've got to realize the benefit of doing that, and you've got to submit your life into the hands 
of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And friend, that's not something you do grudgingly. That's something we do because we want the best life. Jesus said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. What else does the Lord teach us to hear about him? The Bible teaches that we must also forsake all to follow Jesus. Look in Luke chapter 14, verse number 33. Luke 14, verse number 33. Jesus says these words as it relates to forsaking others to follow him and how important that is. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. Friend, it's, it, when we think about being a Christian, what that means, you've got to take up your cross daily and follow Jesus. Forsaking all means that Jesus has to come first. That, that doesn't mean that I don't take care of my family, that I don't take care of my kids, that I don't have other responsibilities at the job and all that. But what it means is this, Jesus comes before all of that. He comes first in my marriage. He comes first in our home life. He comes first at my job. He, is, he has preeminence in every decision that I make, everything that I do, every way I think. Everything else is second place to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I forsake all to put Him first and everybody else gets in line behind Jesus. He's going to be the one that we make decisions based on. And then, of course, it means that we follow him. Luke 9, 23. If any man desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Friend, are we, follow, are we really following Jesus? Are we, are we doing like uh, the man in the Bible who followed from a distance to kind of see maybe how it worked out? Or are we right there following in his footsteps? 1 Peter 2, verse 21. Are we following him as we love others, as we love God, as we strive to live the Christian life, are we following the Lord no matter where we go? And so as we hear the voice of Jesus, we need to listen to what he says about himself, but we also need to hear the voice of Jesus about us. We need to be careful about false prophets. I need to hear what Jesus says as it relates to me not listening to the wrong people. Matthew chapter 7, listen to what the Lord said about the false prophets that existed. Matthew 7, listen to the Lord's teaching in verses 15 through 20. Our Lord warned us that there would be people who try to trick us. And the Lord said in verse 15, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. Good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown in the fire. Therefore, by their fruits... You'll know them. There are false prophets. There are false teachers. We, we're told to test the spirits to see whether they are of God. 1 John chapter 4. And friend, when I hear the voice of Jesus, it reminds me, not everybody is out doing what they ought to do for the right reason. I need to be careful what I listen to, who I listen to. I need to let God's word have the last say in my life. I need to hear the voice of Jesus as it relates to me about where I'm putting my treasure. Where Jesus would teach us some very powerful words in the Sermon on the Mount, but these about getting your priority right are as pertinent and powerful as any words there are. Jesus said this, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. Well, Lord, why not? Where moth and rust corrupt, where thieves break in and steal. But... Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust corrupt, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Friend, when you think about that idea, laying up treasures, the proper treasures, we've got to ask ourselves, Jesus wanted me to get my treasure right. What kind of treasure do I need to focus on? Do I, do, I need to, do I need to focus on amassing gold and silver and diamonds and jewels? Do I need to spend my life searching for 
earthly treasure here? Jesus said, why? Uh, don't lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. Why? Because moth and rust, corruption and age and decay happens to that. And, and not only that, but if you amassed all the treasure in the world, how are you going to keep it safe? You'd be always worried in your mind about somebody maybe breaking in and stealing that. And so Jesus said, don't, don't, don't put your treasure on the wrong things. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust uh, corrupts, where thieves do not break in and steal. Friend, as we think today about hearing the voice of Jesus, did you hear those words clearly? Jesus wants me and he wants you to lay up for ourselves the right kind of treasure. You could amass great wealth in this life, but if you didn't get first things first, all of that would be a horrible, miserable waste. Remember the Lord said, what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? If you had a great crop year, so much so, you, 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 you had a great year financially, you tore down everything you owned, you rebuilt bigger and better, and you said to yourself, you've got many goods laid up for many years. You, you can just take it easy, eat, drink, be merry. And then God said to you that night, you fool, this night will be required. Your soul will be required of you. Luke 12, verses 15 through 21. If you had the best financial year you could imagine, you amassed great wealth, you built beautiful houses, you had fast cars, you had it all, and that night you died, what would God say to you? Would he say, you fool? Or did you take time to listen to the voice of Jesus and get your soul right. Friend, if you've never obeyed the gospel, please know we love you. God loves you. We want to help you in any way. We encourage you to join us next time as we listen more to the voice of Jesus. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, Internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. The gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On demand, and downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the Gospel of Christ.